I just want to know if you'll bind together with me, amen, as we pray for a special need. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you, God, to intervene in this situation, God. I ask you, God, to do what only you can do, God. Lord, we rebuke the devourer, God. We rebuke those, God, that, amen, might try to hinder our growth, God. God, join us together, not only as a body of believers, but as a church, a universal church, God. God, help us resist the voices of darkness, the voices of the enemy, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. Kids, you can be dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, amen, let's turn. Mark chapter 9, verses 8 through 13. Mark chapter 9, verses 8 through 13. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be talking on this topic, only Jesus. Only Jesus. Jesus. Mark chapter 9, 8 through 13 says, And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore. Everyone say, they saw no man. man. Save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen. Till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And this word they kept to themselves, questioning what it meant to rise from the dead. And they asked him, saying, What do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Or why do the scribes say Elijah must come first? And answering, he said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and restores all things. And how is it written concerning the Son of Man? that he must suffer many things and be treated with contempt. But I say to you that indeed Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they wished, just as it is written concerning him. Lord Jesus, I ask you to anoint your word, uh, rather anoint our minds to receive your word. Your word is always anointed. It always does what it sets out to do. Amen. It never returns void. Lord, I ask you to give us a heart to receive it, a mind to understand it, and a willingness to follow it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. You may be seated. Amen. I think it feels great in here, personally. (laughs) Uh, Now, outside, it's a different story. I don't like the heat. Amen. Salvation. Uh, What can you say about salvation? What can you say about God's restoration plan? Salvationism, first of all, it's an awesome experience. Amen. It's an experience that every Christian should cherish. I thank God for salvation. I thank God for his saving power. I thank God for the revelation of allowing me to see who he really is. I thank God for his word. I thank God for the revelation of his word. Praise God. And with all the lessons that we learn in our Christian walk, 
as we're pursuing our Christian life, walking with Jesus is the most important. Because when it's all said and done, <laughs> there's only Jesus. Jesus must be the center of all life's experiences. Can you say praise the Lord? It's true. Amen. You want joy in life? Follow Jesus. You want fulfillment in life? Follow Jesus. Amen. You want the opposite in life? Don't follow Jesus. Amen. It won't take long, amen, until you feel, amen, like there's something missing. When you've experienced Jesus in your life, amen, and then you don't have him anymore, and I was there, uh, you know the difference. You know definitely that something is missing. I don't know if any of you have had uh, mountaintop experiences. I, I, I would say that all of us in some form or another has had uh, during our Christian walk a mountaintop experience. Amen. I'm sure that we could sit here for quite a long time and talk about how God has revealed himself to us in many different ways, how God has uh, done certain miracles in our lives, amen, how God has vi visited us with visitations of spiritual, uh, spiritual wonders, praise God, things that we knew, amen, that it had to be God, praise God. I can sit here and tell you a few things that I've experienced, amen, that I would consider a mountaintop experience, amen. And I think it's safe to say that every one of us enjoys our own mountaintop experiences where it's just you and Jesus. The conversations that me and the Lord shared, the conversations that he expounded uh, to me, amen, about uh, different aspects of life, praise God, whether it was an audible voice that I've heard once or, or it was a dream and a vision or it was uh, through uh, uh, someone telling me their testimony or simply just reading the word of God. I think some of the most profound things that I've heard when God spoke to me is in that time of prayer. Where it was that time where it was me and Jesus. It was a time when I was struggling, praise God, in most situations. It always seems to be that you have that most inner connection when you're really struggling, looking for an answer. And Jesus is always there to supply all the answers you need. Amen. Some people look for Jesus with a physical manifestation of him appearing, amen, but Jesus is with us every single day. Praise God. If it isn't in spirit, amen, it's in the Word of God. Because the Word of God is God's mind written down on paper. The conversations, amen, are so awesome in my life, amen. The reason why Jesus takes us to a higher place to this mountaintop experience is because Jesus wants us to have a different perspective on who he is and what he can do for us. Praise God. These disciples had walked with Jesus. I'm not very sure how long, but I know that they were walking with him before he took them to this higher place, this place where he revealed himself, this place where he showed his innermost beings how the glory of God had permeated through his vessel, and they really saw who Jesus really was, praise God. I think it would be awesome to be there in the presence of God. You see, Jesus 
wants to take us to this higher place so He can show us things where we, us, the church, amen, can have greater clarity in life, where we can see things more clearly. All aspects of the Word of God, such as the writings of the Old Testament and the writings of the New Testament, become more clear as we become face to face, amen, with the revelation of who Jesus really is, amen. I never thought like I did today. I never had the perspective as I do today until I came face to face with Jesus Christ. When he really showed me who he was, amen. When I really got a revelation of who he really is, praise God. You see, because when you understand who he really is, amen, the awesomeness of God, praise God, the awesomeness of God and, and, and the revelation and the enlightenment of who he really is really gives you a profound outlook on on, on who is standing in front of you and who you are talking to, amen, when you're greeting him or meeting him face to face. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9 and verse 8, and suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore. We must come to the place, amen, where flesh is no longer in the picture. It's just me and him praise god and the only way you're going to find that my friend is when you allow your flesh to be moved out of the way the only way you're going to have that mountaintop experience where god will really reveal who you are is really reveal who he, who he is is when you allow yourself to be totally submissive totally vulnerable amen to the revelation of who he really is and, 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 and ask yourself or tell yourself, God, I am nothing without you. I've got to have you, praise God. We must maintain our focus, amen. These last days are going to be horrendous last days and I'm not a preacher of doom and gloom, but I'd, 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 I'd lead us astray, amen, if I didn't remind you and warn you, amen, praise God, that we are headed and we are in, amen, spiritual warfare. There's no doubt when God opens the door of opportunity, we are placed in a position where He gives us revelation into this spirit world, this world of the spirit, praise God, where God begins to reveal some things to you, where God begins to show you some things. But we have to be mindful, you and me, on who we express these revelations to. You see, there's, there, there, there is a lack, amen, of spiritual understanding, amen. And so we have to be careful. Not everybody can absorb, amen, what Jesus has to say. Not everybody can understand. Not everybody can, 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 can grab, amen, uh, the, the understanding of what God is trying to say to the church, praise God. It's nothing new, amen. This has happened throughout time. Jo uh, Joseph, in Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 and 6, says this, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him. Yet the more, and he said unto them, Here I pray you, this, is, this dream is the dream which I dreamed, praise God. It's amazing when God gives you a vision, God gives you a dream, God gives you an idea, praise God, God gives you some type of guidance, and when you try to tell people about the direction that God uh, is, is, is showing you, amen, or the words that God is speaking to you, amen, there seems to be a jealousy that rises up in certain people. I pray that ne that never permeates into Eastgate Pentecostal Church. Uh, Joseph, amen, he told it to his brethren and they hated him for it. His own father, praise God, did not believe the very words that Joseph was telling him. The difference be two, be between the two is Jacob, amen, he, he considered it. 
And I always like to think of it this way. Joseph, Jacob stepped aside and he thought, wait a minute. If God can show me a dream of angels ascending and descending, amen, why can't God show my son a dream? If God can show the preacher a dream, why can't he show a 13-year-old boy a dream in this church, amen? Why can't God reveal certain things to individuals, praise God? We should never disavow things that God is revealing to the people of God, praise God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with receiving dreams and visions from God, but how do we share these visitations to others? Are we puffed up, praise God, with pride because God has gifted us with great revelation of the future? Is it possible that Jesus knew the disciples would share these experiences with a wrong spirit, a wrong attitude? Hey, I've been walking with Jesus, amen, and he took us up to Mount Transfiguration, and, and, and we were the selected ones among the three, praise God, and, and, and me and Jesus got a good thing going. Maybe that's what they were going to say, amen, when they came down the mountain, praise God. They weren't spiritually mature enough to say that, praise God. They had to come to a place, amen, in their development where they were finally able to say it because we read it in the word of God, praise God. But Jesus said, wait, amen. Do not expound on these things until I give you the go ahead, amen. Now we don't read that in the word of God, but that's just Pastor Torres' little rendition, amen. But we got to have the right spirit. Jesus led the way. He didn't, he didn't lift himself up in his flesh. Praise God. He didn't go and say, yes, I'm the great God and I'm the great healer, praise God. In fact, it was just the opposite. He said, tell nobody, praise God. He always leads the way, amen. That's why I love my God. He will never want me to do something that he didn't first do himself. And so maintaining our focus, amen, and walking in the, in, in the mind of the Spirit, amen, is, is, is the right path that we need to travel. It's the way that we need to go. If we're not doing these things, then usually it's a heart issue. So let's look at just a few moments at the issues of the heart. If I was an architect, amen, and I'm not, you, you all know that, you've seen my work, praise God, uh, I've, I've worked years, amen, doing this church, amen, and it's, it's not the best, praise God, so I'm not an architect. But if I was an architect, and if I was an architect of my own heart, how would I build my heart so it could be strong so when tough issues came, I could make the right decisions, praise God, that would help me build the rest of my body, that would help me keep strong, amen, when trials and afflictions, and things came upon my life. How could I prevent myself from being puffed up? How could I prevent myself from, from becoming weak? Praise God. Amen. Do I, have an, an, uh, do I have an investment plan? When a person wants to get somewhere in life, whether it's financially or physically, or spiritually, there must be plans and habits in order to be successful in fulfilling that plan, in fulfilling my plan. And I've come to the realization, and we need to understand, every plan comes with self-examination. Self-examination. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and 5 says this, examine yourself whether you be in the faith, praise God, not that you don't believe God, but whether you're walking in the lifestyle. Faith is lifestyle, praise God. If you're in the faith, if you're walking in the faith, you're walking in the lifestyle, praise God. You're walking in confidence, praise God. You have confidence that God's word can, can, can help you and it can build you, praise God. You're, you, you, you examine yourself and, and you have to make sure that you're walking in the, in the faith. He goes on to say, prove your own selves. 
not nobody else. You prove your own self. The trial comes upon you, amen. Somebody once said, that person makes me mad. Nobody can make you mad. You get mad because your emotions get away from you, praise God. And you react in a way that you ought not to react. You need to go back up to the Mount of Transfiguration and you need to get in that place where it's just you and Jesus. You need to leave your flesh at the bottom of the mountain. Hello? Hello. Know ye not your own selves? <laughs> That's what it says. Know ye not your own self? Well, God, sometimes I got to say, I'll be I'm transparent. No, sometimes I don't. Sometimes my emotions get away, and I'm thinking, why did I say that? Why did I go there? Why did I do that? Praise God. Paul had the same issues. We all have the same issues, praise God. Thank God there's a place of repentance. Thank God there's a place that God had set up, praise God, where we can go into the throne room and say, God, I messed up, praise God. Can you help me out here, God? I need you, God. But that's up to me. Amen. Because I don't know myself. The Bible says my heart is deceitfully wicked, praise God. Who can know it? Amen. Goes on to say how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. Sincere examination will help us as we internalize principles of the Bible as we endeavor to have godly success. I want to be successful in God. I don't want to be, praise God, unsuccessful in God. I want to go to heaven. I want all you to be in heaven with me. I want to be dancing around the throne of God. Praise God. Praise God. Make, make room for me, God. I'm, I'm coming in. Praise God. Amen. And I, I'll do anything I can, amen, to get into the kingdom of God. It's godly success. We have to endeavor. We have to fight. It's going to be a struggle, amen. It, living for God is not always easy. But if you live for God hard, in most aspects, it is easy. Why do I say it's not always easy? Because sometimes trials in life come upon us. Praise God. And that's why we have to walk in the Spirit. That's why we have to deny the things of the flesh. Praise God. We have to have this, in order to have this godly success, we have to achieve and we have to uh, practice certain habits. Praise God. As God is developing us, one of those habits, amen, that we all do when we first come to God is to establish a strong prayer life. A strong prayer life. Psalms chapter 5, verses 2 and 3 says, Hearken unto the voice of my cry. Listen. Pay attention. This, this hearkening. Listen unto the voice of my cry, my King. And my God, for unto thee will I pray. pray is a, prayer is a communication with God. You're in communion with God. You're, you're seeking God. God, I need you, God. And God is there to listen to you, praise God. God has an uncanny way of listening to you, praise God, and giving you favor. Another word for favor is like bending down and just paying so attention to the one that is seeking him. It's a powerful thing when you think about it. Just you and Jesus. Praise God. Unto thee will I pray. My voice shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Amen. In the morning. First thing we do when we get up in the morning is focus on God. It's the first thing we do. Praise God. Prayer is not the quantity. It's good to pray long times, I guess. But God is seeking for quality. Quality. Where's your sincerity? Where's your heart? 
Praise God. God is looking for a sincere heart. One that is sincerely seeking Him. Praise God. And you can't fake it till you make it with God. God is the real deal, praise God. You can fake it with me and I can see you down there praying, amen. I just hope I don't hear any noises like... You have to be sincere in your prayer life, sincere in your walk, sincere in your faith, praise God. Number two is establishing a personal time of devotion in Bible studies. Bible studies can be with someone else. Bible studies can be with a multitude of people. Bible studies can also be with yourself. Private devotions, praise God, where it's just you and Jesus. Only Jesus say in the, uh, two or three, two or th- in, the, in what is it? Two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. Praise God. I think me and Jesus is two witnesses. Praise God. You can have more if you want. That's fine. Praise God. But it only takes two. Me and Jesus. You and Jesus. Amen. So personal time of devotion and Bible studies. Praise God. Psalms one nineteen and seventy three says, "Thy hands have made me." And fashioned me. God is a hands-on God. Praise God. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty, praise God. He's not afraid to, 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 to hold you and, 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 and to, to mentor you and, and, to, and to be with you, praise God. He's a hands-on God. He forms you with his hands. He created you with his hands. The psalmist goes on to say, Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Praise God. Reveal your word to me. Reveal your ways to me. Give me understanding, praise God. Many people stop reading the Bible because they don't understand. I would say this, keep reading. Be sincere and keep reading. And God will help you. God will establish you. Amen. In his word, he will establish you in the faith. Praise God. He will establish you in your walk. Hallelujah. And the next thing you know, you will be a strong, vibrant Christian. Praise God. Where you can be effective in the lives of others that are struggling also. Praise God. Number three is uh, establishing a habit of consistently attending church services. Psalms 92 and 13 says, Those that be planted, (laughs) planted, in order to be planted, praise God, you've got to be submerged, amen. You've got to be submerged in in the house of God, praise God. You've got to be submerged in the word of God. You've got to allow the seed, the word of God, to, 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 to be planted inside of you and to germinate where roots, amen, can, can dig deep down into the church, praise God. So when the winds of change sweep across your life, amen, and cause, amen, friction, amen, and cause dilemma, amen, the winds of change and the winds of rage won't uproot you, amen, and blow you away, praise God. You are planted by a river, amen. Praise God. Those that be planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God, amen. I like when he says, shall flourish. You will be productive, amen. Things will be, begin to happen, amen. Not at first, it never happens at first, amen. But if you give it time, amen, and you, and, and, and you allow yourself, amen, to be susceptible, amen, to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to change you, amen, you will begin to flourish, you will begin to produce, amen, uh, fruit, amen. Corporate church service in the worship of God is, re- is what really defines our character in God. Those who are consistent in attending church service gives themselves more opportunity to let God deal with the hidden issues that only God knows about. That only God knows about. Praise God. 
there's some things in my life that I'm not going to reveal to you, praise God. And there's some things in your life I'd rather not know about. Praise God. Amen. Amen. There, I, I, I'm not going to take my shirt off and expose myself. Praise God. I had emptied the church building. Praise God. So there's some things you don't need to know about me. Amen. But God knows about it. And God's the only one that can fix me. Amen. My biggest problem, amen, is uh, actually it, it, it was and it wasn't that I wanted, I wanted to change my wife when she came into Pentecost because I had already been in Pentecost for years. And I thought, man, if I could just change her and mold her into the way that I want her to be, she'd be the perfect person. But there's no perfect person. Praise God. And the more, Brother George, I took my hands off her and God put her, his hands on her, change happened, amen. She began to develop and it was a flourishing more than I could ever imagine. My wife is awesome. My wife is wonderful. My wife is great, amen. She's more than I ever dreamed of. She really is, praise God. She is dedicated. I trust her. She's in the faith, praise God. That's what I asked for. Well, I asked for a woman that could sing, and she could sing. But it wasn't actually what I was kind of thinking. But she makes good melody to God, and that's what's important, praise God. But uh, she's sincere, amen. But you know what? I can't sing either. So we're a perfect couple. Praise God. And if anybody tells her that, I'm going <laughs> to. Finally, the final habit, habit we want to incorporate is doing good works. Amen. Good works is really faith in action. And the Bible is consistently repeating these words, faith without action is vain and empty. Action, they say action don't save you, but I, I, I beg to differ with you. I think action does save you. Because action shows individuals what our faith is all about. Praise God. Now, you can't work into heaven. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you love somebody, you're going to do something right. for that individual. Right. And if you love God, amen, you're going to do something for God. Praise God. It doesn't mean that the more you do for God, the more he's going to love you. He doesn't love you any more than he's already loved you when he first saw you. Right. And he's not going to love you more tomorrow because God is simply love. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's it. He, he just loves you. Praise God. You can't buy God's love. You can't... Uh, anyway. Faith without action is dead, James says. Praise God. So I want to put my belief, my sincerity, my faith, I want to put it in action. Why do I want to put it in action? Because I want to see Eastgate Pentecostal Church full. I want to see Vancouver church full. I want to see battleground full. I want to see, I want to see God's church, his universal church full, praise God. And it's never going to happen. And you say, Brother Torres, that's, that's kind of, no, that's biblical. Right. Not everybody is going to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but that isn't my problem. My problem is to reach out, amen. My, 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 my job, amen, is to reach out, amen, and, and, and give the gospel, amen, direct them to the Lord, and let God deal with them, right. praise God. I can't save anybody. Right. I can't build a church. I can only make myself available as God works through us amen. to do His will, right. not my will, His will, praise God. And if I allow myself to be submissive to His will, God will do great things, amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Jesus is good. And if we remove our flesh, flesh and let Jesus only be the one in charge, then great things will happen. Amen. Your family, your finances, amen. And everything, all, all parts of us, amen. God will multiply. 
praise God. Let's stand.